it's Jen with Astro T Astrology. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to sum up the last week of 2023. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened in 2023 and uh, what to expect. Maybe a little peek at the new year ahead. So we are, you know, I can't even believe that we are already starting and getting close to 2024 and it seems like the older I get the faster time goes and that is of course except for when I'm on the treadmill and that's when time just stands still so um, I don't know about y'all but I am exhausted and I really am looking forward to this a nice full moon in cancer just to cuddle up and to just take comfort in making it through this crazy 2023 it's very intense year um, I actually woke up last night around 1 30 a.m. Um, forgetting that there was a full moon coming and uh, it was so bright outside and I remember thinking oh, what did I leave all the outside lights on all the Christmas lights because it was so bright it was like it was day um, but then I remembered oh it's the full moon and you know it's time that we really uh, try to Oh, my cats run around in the background. Try to embrace that moon because this is the major light of this season. So we want to embrace that light, embrace the moon, embrace this Cancer full moon, and really nurture ourselves during it. Um, so, you know, it was, like I said, a tumultuous year, uh, uh, very obvious by the astrology. Astrologers really have been looking at these past couple of years for a while now, knowing that a lot was going to be taking place. Now, maybe not a lot has taken place in your life. Maybe things has kind, kind of got, gone status quo. But if you look at the world in general, a lot of things are changing. A lot of things are, there's a lot of intensity going around, a lot of conflicts. Uh, so a lot going on. Um, this really, these, this time that we're in right now, um, it's really marking the beginning of a critical point in our world's history. Um, it's kind of an onset of a global shift, a revolution of sorts. Um, so you want to really be aware of what's happening, keep up with the astrology so you kind of, you know, have some insight like as to when things might be calm, as to when things might be crazy. Um, and you know what peaks we get into the future especially with what we've seen this year so far um, so you can do this especially by subscribing to the channel and get notified of upcoming videos to keep you alerted you hit that little bell and you'll get notified um, and so that's how we can work together to build the channel and to really um, to really just kind of grow together and get the astrology out there and you know kind of almost give a little bit of a peek or a warning into like, oh, this might be happening to you. So just beware. So let's look back. So right here I have um, pretty much the biggest thing that's going on this week. And that is the full moon in Cancer that's happening really tonight um, on uh, the 26th, which is today. So looking back to this year, we really saw significant, yet, you know, we want to put things into perspective. Let's look back and see the different things that have happened. We saw so much going on in AI that it was, you know, kind of scary, but it was like almost little sneak peeks, you know, nothing that really kind of was set in stone. And then, you know, things are happening. Okay, now we need to put regulations on this and, you know, here's what's going on with it. We also had information coming out about UFOs and um, outer planetary life. Um, all this is very Pluto and Aquarius, those sneak peeks of what's going to be coming. You want to keep track and you want to just kind of, you know, think, okay, this is this what's going to be the big theme come 2025 when Pluto is really ingressed into 2025. Um, so also there's been so many protests and protests about anything and really everything. Um, so again, you know, this ongoing theme throughout this year of just protesting this and protesting this war and protesting, you know, this judgment and this and um, just everything. And then we also have these presidential indictments and inquiries and informations and secrets coming out, top secret documents that Trump had, that Biden had, that that National Guard guy from Massachusetts had. And they're keeping them in these insecure places or even that guy in mass that was 
putting that information out there. That is very Pluto in Aquarius too. So it's, it's, you're kind of finding things out, finding out things that have been before kind of suppressed, kind of hidden away. That's that Pluto really digging down. So, you know, what else is going to resurface? What are, is really going to come out? What truths are going to come out? Um, you know, about all these indictments that are going on with, with both presidential, no, you know, who most likely will be our presidential nominees. Um, both of these two, they have all these indictments against them and one has a, an inquiry against them and it's just, it's crazy and I've never known this in history. I've been on this planet for a half a century and this is just, it's, it's the craziest thing I've ever kind of realized. And, you know, but that is very Pluto and Aquarius, you know, that is, you know, changing the laws, you know. Aquarius wants laws, it wants rules, but it also wants to change them. It wants to make its own rules. So, you know, oh, we want to get rid of all those, that Capricorn rules, all those old school rules, all that old boys club. We're getting rid of that, and this is what we want. We want new, we want new rules, we want new laws, and, you know, we're going to change the world. Um, Aquarius is so much about, um, you know, just that uh, humanitarianism, helping people, trying to do what's right. But what exactly is right? I think that's what we need to kind of find out in the next year before we actually ingress fully. Um, so we also have a lot of the gender issues in the schools, in professional sports. Um, you know, this is all about, you know, boundaries. And, you know, boundaries not being and, you know, people, okay, well, we're going to accept this now, which years ago people didn't accept so now we see the transition even you know the catholic church is saying that they're going to accept a lot of this um which was unheard of back when uh, i was a child and now everybody's really starting to embrace the differences in human beings and that everyone doesn't just fit into a box but what are the rules that we're going to have what are the new laws we're going to have and how is this going to kind of you know play out in the future it's going to be really interesting to find out and i think um those things are going to be really in really big players uh when when you know during this global shift during this 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 critical change in our history um we also have a very saturn and pisces uh we have uh the north node in aries so themes about these wars that are going on. Um, you know, we think Saturn and Pisces, and that is about borders. And you look at these, the wars that are going on, it's about kind of taking over borders. Russia has been trying to take over and gain back um, where, you know, what it used to rule with, um, what it used to own until it, the Ukraine split off. It's trying to regain control of that changing, creating new borders, um, going after what they feel is their destiny. That's that North Node. Okay, so Putin thinks that's their destiny. You know, maybe Hamas thought it was their destiny to, to go against Israel. Now Israel feels it's their destiny to then retaliate. Um, so it's, it's, you know, finding that, okay, the North Node, that is, you know, oh, okay, is that your destiny? But sometimes no, no that can be almost a little bit evil because sometimes what we're fighting for the consequences are way worse than the gain um so it's hurting a lot of people's lives and in, in all aspects of it um if you look in any uh of the situations that are going on there's so many people being killed so many people being hurt displaced um and it's really sad uh, so we also see those blurred borders uh, in our own country with our southern border. We have a lot of um, immigrants coming in and they don't really have anywhere to go. So, you know, the border's pretty much, you know, it's like that, that Saturn in Pisces. The border is very um, insecure or unsecure, not insecure. Um, unsecured so people are coming in and they say it's in waves and think Pisces waves and it's just you know waves of people coming in and they don't know what's in the future they don't know where they're going they don't know where we don't know what we're going to do with all of them and it's just very blurred lines going on right now um, so you know that and, and you know 
very Saturn and Pisces. Um, you know, that Plutonian and Aquarian energy is really not taking full effect until November of 2024 when it fully ingresses into Aquarius and stops doing this little back and forth retrograde forward motion where we're only getting the sneak peeks, where things start to get kind of set in stone when rules you know that transformation Pluto's about transformation and we talked about on a on a previous video um, what the past was with Pluto when Pluto was in Aquarius before when Pluto first started doing its peak and the last time was I think it was in 19 or 19 no that's not true it was in about 1776 so around the time of the Constitution it might have been a year later I'm not I can't remember off the top of my head but think of you know, that was when this nation was created. That's when the Constitution was. Um, so, is this things that we're going to, rewriting of the Constitution, rewriting of laws, is this what's going to happen with the um, Pluto and Aquarius uh, at the end of 2024? So, it'll be interesting anyway to see. Um, but again, we're in this global shift, and it's either change with or, um, you know, be resistant, and resistance is not going to help. Change is always good, um, of course, to an extent. You know, we don't want, you know, these AI robots like Terminator to take over the world and be like a demolition man. If you haven't seen that, that's all I can think of when I think of this AI stuff. It's just like nobody's really, nobody has really good, you know, personal skills anymore. And nobody's really just bonding one-on-one. -on -one. Everything's done over the internet or over the phone or like texting. And so no one's just kind of like meeting face to face anymore and and you know having to call the father to see you know, talk to the daughter when the guy's got a crush on her or something like that anyway um so as we've been predicting as all these astrologers have been predicting over the past few years is that um things will be unsettled until about 2025 so i really stay buckled in saturday and pisces um those energies expect until may of 2025 um when it be peaks and fully ingresses um, and then we also have the nodes um, of Aries going into Pisces on January 12th 2025 and that aggression that Mars is really going to calm down after that so you know it's going to make it a lot more you know that Pisces kind of mutable compassionate that Piscean energy that compassionate that accepting um, so, you know, maybe accepting of what things are and we won't have so many wars or so many, you know, what's going on right now and all this aggression, this Aries will finally calm down a little bit. Um, so well, let's talk about this week, our final week getting into the New Year's. Let's see what we have to expect. So this week, um, we have our final full moon, like we talked about a little bit. It will be in Cancer at four degrees. Um, so the moon, I don't have it up here. Uh, so the moon's in Cancer at four degrees, 58 minutes. Um, so opposite, it's on the uh, Capricorn Cancer line. So it's about really taking care of yourself and nurturing yourself. Um, nurturing yourself financially, the sun, taking care of yourself, maybe trying to move forward in, in your life, in your career. Um, so we have the sun in Capricorn. That is, you know, going for your goals, going from for what you were put here on earth to do. Um, as well as really taking care of your feelings, taking care of your emotions, um, and just that that self-care that really needs to be done, of course, especially this time of year, after the holidays. Like I know I said at the beginning of this video that I am just I'm tired and just, you know, all the holidays, they're draining, and it just feels nice to, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit cold so we can just hunker in, maybe watch the snow fall out the window, and just kind of calm, bring some inner calm until we have to go shovel it anyway. <laughs> anyway, so this new moon will also be in a sextile to Jupiter. So we see here, sextile to Jupiter, that's in Taurus. Um, and it will also be trining Saturn. So up here, the sun will then be sextiling and then trining here. So the moon sextiling Jupiter, trining Saturn. So that means it's in opposition to the sun. So that means the sun will then be sextiling Saturn and trining Jupiter. Um, so 
the moon, of course, is in its dignity in Cancer, so it's happy. This is a happy place for us. It's hopefully going to be a place of peace and self-care, self-nurturing, nurturing our relationships. Um, we'll really see how this falls in your chart. Where's Cancer in your chart? Um, where does that fall? So for me, um, Cancer is in my seventh house, so hopefully it'll uh, nurture my family and my um, my, me and my husband's relationship and keep all that just very nice and hunky-dory and any issues that we have maybe we'll work right through them and everything will just be nice and cared for um, so the moon in his dignity just it just really kind of is good for our hearts and hopefully we won't get that kind of like loneliness feeling that we can get this time of year um, so with the sextile of Jupiter, you want to, you know, you want to be social. Uh, it brings good fortune. Jupiter brings a lot of good fortune, optimism. So, you know, you're going to be thinking a little more positive. So if you were thinking negative because of all the negative stuff that was going on last year, this can really help you to be a little bit more positive. Um, just, uh, just, and I think this is just what we need after the holidays, ending this crazy year. The moon also is trining Saturn again. So this is giving us the pages, pages, patience and, um, and strength to really deal with these difficult issues, problems on a national level, on a personal level. So if you're having um, certain personal problems, this could be give you the strength, give you the foundation to really work with them, um, with that trying to Saturn, um, and really just help in that optimistic, that Jupiter optimistic, that healing, that growing, and just expanding of hopefully love and, um, and patience and just acceptability. So, um, with the the trying to Saturn, we also see a lot of those traditional values playing a role here. Um, Saturn is about you know old traditions, and you know if we think of um, you know Saturn, it also is the ruler of Capricorn. The sun is in right now, so we're kind of doing old traditions. So if you don't have that Yule pot, um, bringing some nice happy energy to your house. Uh, definitely check out my little short that I did on how to create one and bring good energy into your home. Um, you know, do some, you know, cleansing, use some sage, cleanse your home of any negative energy, any stresses that went on through the year. Um, also would be a great time to pay a visit to maybe uh, your grandparents or, um, an older neighbor, an older friend, and um, just sit down with them and talk about the old times. And now would be just a great time to just kind of get back to basics, get back to what things used to be like, you know, before everyone was just, you know, heads down into their phones like this all the time. I swear, sometimes when my kids come over, um, I'm looking at the top of their head more than I'm looking in their faces because their heads are down like this. And it's like, be where your feet are instead. And, you know, just like, you know, before we had all this stuff and all these distractions in life, that's what you had to do. You had to be responsible. You had to take care of your home, take care of your family, and nurture those relationships. Um, so maybe even pay a visit to that elderly neighbor or friend or someone that is alone during the holidays. Maybe visit um, a retirement home or a, um, an old folks home where people are just kind of alone. Use that Jupiter sextile to really spread that holiday cheer, really boost people, give them a little bit of optimism, give them a little bit of friendship, and just really, you know, be out there to create just this harmonious, just happy, um, you know, because the holidays can really spotlight isolation. So, uh, you know, it, it just when people are by themselves in the, on the holiday season, it could be that much more intense and that much more depressing to them. So kind of reaching out and maybe, you know, if there are people in retirement homes that don't have family or their family's far away and can't visit, if you pay them a visit, I think it'll be really appreciated. So, you know, open your heart to those lonely people out there that are just looking for a little bit of attention, a little bit of love. Um, so going on with the full moon, they bring culminations. So a full moon in Cancer is about that culmination of emotional, of feelings. Um, and then on the 27th as well, which uh, is 
so that's tomorrow actually. So the 26th is the full moon. 27th, Chiron actually stations direct. So Chiron is also about your inner wound, your inner pain and past pains that you're trying to heal. So that stations a direct in Aries. So playing the victim really just kind of needs to come to an end. It's like that, oh, what was me thing and all that feelings, you know. All those old wounds, issues that came popping up during the retrograde should have been dealt with. And hopefully they were. Hopefully you reached out, got some help if needed, so that you could deal with all these past pains, uh, past emotions. Because um, Chiron actually ended up going uh, retrograde shortly after the new moon in Cancer. So the new moon in Cancer was on July 17th. And then uh, Chiron, Chiron went retro on July 24th. So it was already in its pre-shadow period. Um, so this went very much hand in hand. So it's all about that healing thyself, um, that healing the moon, rehabilitation, facing those dark and painful memories that Chiron from the past that you know just keep poking up their, e their ugly head, that keep us from moving forward, that are that hindrance, that are holding us back. Um, and this is, you know, coming out now with that full moon, that Chiron direct, we can emerge rejuvenated, repaired, restored, um, use that cancer to nourish yourself, rest if needed, and recover. This reminds me of, you know, say you're driving down the street and you see an old dresser found on the side of the road. Um, it's a cast off. So that's that, you know, new moon in cancer. So we pick it up, new moon pick it up, we take it home, and with the waxing moon as and with the Chiron and retrograde, we bring it back to its original, we restore it, we maybe sand it down to take off all that new and ugly paint, um, restore it to its former glory, and just letting it emerge with the full moon and putting it in a nice prominent place in our home, and it can be new and improved working and put it, you know, the waxing moon, or the, the waning moon now, so then with the culmination of the full moon, this is when we put it out, this is when we display it. So look at all that we've done, you know, this is, can be in our own bodies, this can be, you know, with the furniture that we restored, okay, so we restored this, we helped this, we rejuvenated, we brought it back to the luster and the greatness that it was, and now we are going to put it out here and give it a nice job and give it a nice, you know, make it feel worthy. So that is going to be with the waning moon. So now that the moon is going to be waning after this, we are now going back and doing and using what we've learned from that waxing moon to put it, as fix ourselves and maybe to help others to fix themselves because Chiron is that that healer that you know maybe if they can't fix themselves they can use what they've learned to fix others so you know help yourself to help others uh, and help them to restore themselves and rejuvenate themselves um, so we end the week with even more positivity with Jupiter stationing direct on December 30th so we're bringing in the new year by expanding your horizons take some risks do something out of the ordinary um, you know, do something that's not you, that's unlike you maybe. Go ahead and book that trip you've been wanting to take and that you've been putting off, maybe oh, financially or this or that, you know, just do it. and Or help teach someone with that knowledge that you've attained, that healing knowledge, um, all of that. So now that we are gonna have Jupiter moving forward, that is just that expansive, that just generosity that we wanna just give and be with others and just you know, spread the positivity throughout the world because I think the world really needs it at this time. If you ask me, I think it would be a great time for that. So yes, of course, there are some unsavory aspects that are happening this week. So we have um, Mars moving into a conjunction uh, with Mercury because Mercury is now retrograde. So it's moving you know, in the backwards motion and Mars is moving forward, so they're gonna come together. So Mercury is squaring Neptune. So we see Neptune here and it's uh, 90 degrees away, so that is a square. Now we know squares are just that kind of uncomfortable, that, um, you know, something that we have to kind of work through. You know, it's not necessarily 
bad, but it's something that's going to take a little bit of work and a little, we'll grow from it. Uh, so Mercury squaring Neptune on the 27th um, could really show some miscommunication, misunderstandings. Uh, then Mars, of course, moves up and squares Neptune on the 28th. And that's that kind of unsurety. You know, this is Neptune we're talking about. You know, miscommunications, misunderstandings. That's with the Mercury. Or, you know, Neptune is about um, kind of a little bit of confusion, kind of a little bit of fogginess, uh, not seeing things clearly. So not maybe uh, being able to express yourself clearly, especially with Mercury in retrograde. Mercury is kind of almost doing an introvert of itself and just not maybe not communicating at all when it normally would because it's afraid of how things are going to come out. They're going to be misconstrued. Um, with Mars then squaring Neptune on the 28th, that's unsurety of how to move forward, of afraid of the unknown, afraid of, you know, what's behind that door. Like when you're driving in the fog and you're trying to move forward, but that fog is just making it you nervous, so you're going like at a snail's pace. And this morning it was exactly so Martian uh, Neptune for me because just driving to work, it was so foggy and I could barely see anything in front of me. And when I put on the high beams, it would just reflect the light back. And it was just that very mercury retrograde with things you know, coming back, the Mars making it hard to move forward. Um, and that, of course, that then we have the Mars and Mercury conjunction with Mercury in retrograde. It can really kind of bring out aggression. You could be uh, snappy at people. You could be easily angered. Um, retrograde, you know, Mercury could be non-communicative, maybe, you know, you're not speaking, you're maybe a little bit introverted, um, overly critical perhaps, um, you know, maybe just kind of just not being nice. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, we want to focus on the positive. So again, get that Yule Pot simmering, find out how, watch my little short that I just did. I can put a link in the description. Um, but really just by bringing good vibes into your home will help wipe away the negativity of the past. And so that about sums up. Our next video is going to be about a little forecast uh, for what to expect next year. So we'll get in a little bit deeper. So expect that coming up. I hope y'all have a great rest of 2023. So be sure to subscribe and get notified. So hit that little bell and just come grow with me. I appreciate everybody that has uh, subscribed to the channel already, that has um, been watching the videos, and I'm hoping next year can be even bigger and we can all just work together and just, so you guys feel free to tell me what you're looking forward to in the new year and you know we can go in that direction. It'll be a lot of fun, I think. So we'll be having, you know, again, our 2024 sneak peek. So stay tuned and I'll see y'all then, bye.